Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am back with another very interesting SQL problem. In this problem, we are going to use multiple SQL functions like case when, and also we are going to do rolling sum. So very interesting video, watch till end. We are going to learn something interesting. Okay, so here's the problem. Say you have a access to all the transactions for a given merchant account. Okay, so we have a transaction table and we have all the transaction for the merchant. So it can be deposit or withdrawal. Okay, so let's say in a bank account, you are doing a deposit as well as withdrawal, right? So we have this data. It has transaction ID, type, amount and transaction date. Okay, right is equal to print cumulative balance of the merchant account at the end of each day. Okay, so at the east end of each day, we have to tell the cumulative sum with the total balance reset to zero at the end of the month. Okay, which means for every month we have to start from zero. Okay, so I have from first day till 30th, I have to tell the cumulative sum for each date, and then when next month starts, I have to again reset it. Okay, so this is the output it looks like for this input. So for example, if you see, we have these three dates, right? Seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight. If you see, there are two withdrawals and one deposit. So 178 minus these two withdrawals will be 106, right? So all the withdrawals we have to subtract and deposit we have to add. So it will be 106, right? Now on 10th, it is the same month. It is the same month. So we will continue from here. We have two more deposits, this one and this one. So in 106, we will add these two values, 32 and 65, and it will come to 205, right? So this is how we have to do it. Now, let's say we have a new month starting, then all this will go away. We don't care about it. It will again start from the first transaction of that month. Okay, so let's start by solving problem. Uh, before checking my solutions, you can try yourself. I will put this link in the description box. You can try it for free. You don't have to pay any money on this website, Data Lemo. And let's start with the solution. So what we are going to do first, the first thing is the main problem is there are some deposit and some withdrawal. If we do just, just normal sum, it will add everything. So what we will do, we will multiply by minus one if the Transaction is a withdrawal and if it is deposit, we will keep it positive. So when we add it, it will become net value, right? Second thing is this transaction date is a timestamp. We don't need anything at timestamp level. So we will convert transaction date to date, normal date without timestamp, right? Because I want output at the transaction date level. There is no point of keeping time. Okay. So what I will do here, I will say transaction date right colon colon so in postgres you can just say colon colon date and it would convert it to to a date and it will remove the timestamp from from the transaction date okay this is first thing second thing is i will say case when case when type equal to withdrawal i will make it negative then minus one into amount, right? So it will make it negative if it is a withdrawal, right? Else as it is and as amount. Okay, if I run it and show you, if you see we have the date, the time is gone now, all is zero, zero. And we have amount also somewhere negative, wherever it is withdrawal, it will be negative, right? So this is done. Now, another thing is on the same day, we can have multiple transactions, right? So I want to aggregate data. I want to aggregate data at transaction date level, right? So for example, if you see, these are the same day transaction and we need data at day level. So we need to aggregate data at day level. So I will say group by group by transaction date, date, right? And I will do some of this, some of this and as amount, right? Let me run this now. So if you see for each date, 
let me do a sort also order by transaction date okay so if you see for each of the date we have got the amount now what we have to do we just have to do running sum right that is first thing and second thing is we have to reset at monthly level so for each new month we have to reset it okay so to identify new month and new year we will use extract function here i will show you so i will just make it as ct with day level value as this okay or let me just call it ct for simplicity okay and then i will say select from ct what i need i need transaction date this transaction date is converted to already date only date right time stamp is no, no more there and sum of sum of what sum of this amount now this sum of amount we have to do cumulative so i will say over order by order by transaction date by default it is ascending so which is fine because we have to in ascending order we have to do it as cumulative sum right let me run this and show you how it looks like so now we have got the cumulative sum right 1 5 17 28 30 now if you see for july we will be carrying over from june so we will take care of it but this part is done getting the cumulative sum is done right the cumulative balance of merchant at the end of each day so for end of, end of the each day we are getting the cumulative sum let me take this value also to make it clear in the output Okay, this will give you be better picture. Sorry, I have put extra this one. Okay, uh, it will give you error as well. Okay. Okay, so now look at the amount and cumulative sum. So it is seven ninety eight, seven ninety eight minus sixty seven. So seven ninety eight minus sixty seven is seven thirty one. Again one sixty five, seven thirty one plus one sixty five is eight ninety six. so on and so forth it is going now for july what is happening we have 298 so we are adding 608 from previous month to 298 and we are getting 907 now this is the problem right we don't want that we want to reset it every month right so for that we will have to use partition by so in partition by we will use year and month from the transaction date so that for each month there is a separate window created okay so for that i have to use the partition by clause so i will say partition by partition by what i need i need year and month so i will say extract so this is how you can extract year extract year from transaction date so i need to put a partition by year and month as well right so if year and month is a will make a combination of a month right if i give only month then that will be a problem because we can have two years of data and although all the months will come together which will be wrong so we have to give year and month both so extract year from transaction date and extract month from transaction date okay this is the partition by and this is order by now let's run code okay so if we come to the july now if you see for july we have 299 this 608 is done we are resetting at july right so this is how the partition by is working now what i have to do i just need these two things i will just remove amount for now because in the output they are not expecting the amount only the cumulative amount and i will submit it they have accepted the answer okay so this solution is correct i hope you have learned something new in this video please do like the video and let me know if you have a better solution comment your solution i would love to see it 
and you can practice more questions from this website thanks for watching have a good day bye bye